What's up guys? Bill here from Evil Olive. Uh, today what we're going to do is a little tutorial on doing some milk jug skulls. Uh, basically what that is is you take a, your average one gallon milk jug and you get yourself a good quality resin skull and basically you cut it up, put it over it, shrink it down with a heat gun and after you're done and get it painted you end up with a couple of these. Uh, they're real cheap, real effective way to do it. Uh, you know, you're never going to tell um, that this used to be a milk jug. Um, some of them, if you take your time with it, you can get it to where you can actually have people hold them and they'll think they're holding one of these guys. So, uh, without further ado, welcome to the Olive Jar. So what we're going to need to do this today is uh, you're going to need a good quality resin skull. This one we picked up on eBay. I think it was about $25 with free shipping. Pretty good quality. So we're going to have that. Um, we're going to need something to make a stand out of, which I used some uh, PVC pipe and some cardboard, uh, just because that's what I had literally laying in the corner over there. Then you're going to need some milk jugs, a good quality heat gun that does have a temperature adjustment setting on it, which comes in handy, a cheap hot glue gun, one inch paintbrush, and some water. And that's going to be to cool this down after we're molding it. So we'll go a little closer in depth here and we'll get started. All right guys, here we go. So once again, this is a skull that we had gotten on eBay. We had ordered this and it works really good. It's got some good detail in it. You know, it's not the super cheap ones that you'd get at like pop-up Halloween stores. It's got some good detail and it's resin, so that means it's not going to deform or anything when we put our heat to it. This one had a detachable jaw on it, the bottom jaw. So what I did is I went in and I hot glued it in place. Now in the picture album that I had done with this, I did say not to do the bottom jaw for your first time. That being, unless the bottom jaw is already permanently attached on the skull you get, the heat gun is going to melt that glue and this will fall off halfway through your, your molding of it, um, which happened to be my first time. So that's why I say, if it's your first time doing it, just and this is a detachable jaw, just leave it off. It's going to be a lot easier on you. It'll be easier to learn, I should say, how to do it without. I just had a piece of PVC pipe laying around from uh, some LED flicker candles that I'm doing, and I'll do another video on that soon. So I just took this and I cut it an angle where I could hot glue it in place at the base of the skull there. And you can't really see, but up inside, just behind the, uh, the teeth. So it's hot glued in about four spots. Um, it's pretty sturdy. Usually about every second or third skull I'll do, I'll have to pull it off and redo it because it does get weakened. Because this being a resin skull, it does hold the heat that you apply to. I took two pieces of cardboard just because it was laying around, hot glued them together, and then hot glued my PVC pipe to that, and it works really good. Doing it out of wood would be a more permanent solution if you're looking to do these kind of steady. That being because the cardboard does get wet and this is already starting to warp a little bit here. So that's the skull. Now we have our milk jug. As long as it's a semi-translucent plastic, it will work. The orange juice containers that are white will not work. You need something that's pretty, pretty flexible, you know, willing to bend. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have to trim a bit of this off. Now what I'll usually do is go right around the mouth, down the side, underneath the handle, and out. Doesn't have to be perfect, but generally this shape will get you started. So I've been saving these because I'm convinced that one day I'm going to find a use for them, which I probably won't. I'm going to throw them out in the next days when I will think of a use for them. So stay tuned for that. So we end up with this having a hole cut out of it, and then what I'm going to do is at the very base, I'm going to slip all the way down to the bottom. Right to there. And then at the top, I'm going to go in line with my front corner. And sometimes there's even a seam there that you can follow. I'm going to cut down just about two inches to where the container starts to straighten out. And then I'm going to go about 45 degrees off of that one way, and 45 the other way. That one went a little farther, but that's okay. Now, what you're going to do. This is actually a good time to take off your label before you get too curious. So we're just going to go ahead and pull this label off. Now that our label's off, 
we're going to take what was the top of our uh, milk jug and we're going to slide it over to the back. And now the way I do it is I get the bottom so the bottom is perfectly flat on the top of the skull. And I want to align my very front corner with the nose and the front of the teeth. And what that does is it's just easier to have this part that's already got this contour to it to form around the front of the face. And then we're gonna work all this into the top of the skull where we don't really have a lot of detail. People aren't gonna to pay too much attention to the top. They're gonna to be looking at the facial features where we got our light and our dark contrast. So up here is where we want all the little malformities to be. And that being just all these ridges, all that plastic's gotta go somewhere. And unless you take a lot of time heating this up, and cooling it down slow and working with it, you're not going to get it perfectly smooth. And then we're just going to mark around roughly the shape of the skull. So. It doesn't have to be perfect at this stage because we can't always cut a little bit later on. So now we pull this off. As you can see, we now have our line Thumb up straight, going all the way around, and once again, this is the back of the skull. So it will be sitting like this. Okay, so this is what we're left with. So we're going to take our skull again, put this over the top, and now these first couple minutes that you're heating this up and cooling it down, you always want to check to make sure I'll use this line at the top here to make sure I have it going straight down the front of my face just to make sure that my orientation is going to stay right for ease later on of doing the detail work, keeping the thicker plastic up here and the thinner plastic down around where I'm going to need to uh, detail my features. So with that we'll, uh, we'll get started. Okay so we have a, a cup of just tap water here and I've got a one inch paintbrush. These bristles are plastic so if you have a cheap brush that uses the plastic bristles when you get this plastic hot, it is enough to melt this. And you can kind of see it's a little frayed on the sides here. Um, so if you're using a plastic bristle brush, be careful how long you're keeping your pressure on there. You always want to make sure it's good and wet. Uh, if you've got a better quality paintbrush, an actual hairbrush, you should be fine. So where I like to start is I'm going to form around the bridge of the nose and try to get underneath this top layer of teeth. And what that's going to do is let the front of the milk jug bite onto something and that's going to make it easier to form everything thereafter. If this is wiggling around a lot, you're going to have a hard time getting your features in and you're going to have to go back and rework stuff. I'm going to get a shorter extension cord because this is not, uh, not putting out as much heat as it should. I should not be able to put my finger on that right now. So, be right back. If you are less than 10 feet away from an outlet, you do not need a 100 foot extension cord. So, just a note. Okay, once you can see it start getting kind of completely clear like that, we're going to take our brush, and we're just going to push in, and we're going to cool it off. Now the process is very slow to start. Um, I mean, that's not a major result at all. Um, but we're going to keep doing that until we get this to be able to hold onto the skull a little bit better, and then we'll be able to come back and start doing some detail work. So now I'm going to try and move up the forehead a little bit and these, wherever there's a rounded edge on the bottom is going to be your thickest point. So that's going to take the most time to heat up and that's also going to be the strongest bond that you're going to get out of it. So we're going to try and melt this down so we get a smooth part at the front of the skull and we'll let the plastic kind of bunch up as we move farther back. As it melts, you can see it starting to fold back on itself. Wherever there's a crest or a point, that's going to be where you're encountering your most resistance. So you see as I smush that down, we had one lip fold over here. So we're going to have to take some extra time to go back to heat that up again and smooth it back out. We want to try and work up to wherever, like up here and over here, we're getting a hard crease. That hard crease means that there's not enough room for the plastic to move just one way. It's trying to fight itself back. Um, so we're going to have to try and get those out. Okay. 
you see I'm getting a crease coming here. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. So I got effectively almost a whole quarter of the top of this skull translucent. And I'm brushing against the back of it because I want to try and get the back to bite before I do any detail work on the front because every time we heat part of this up another part softens. So you can see from where I had my nose originally that was tight in there, it's not tight in there anymore because we made all this soft and it started to work its way back up to the front. So now that that part's smooth, I'm going to go up to the crest here. I'm going to try and get this middle area flat out and I'm going to do my brush strokes this way so I keep the flatness from here coming over here, kind of like a bad comb over. And then we'll work on doing our front and then we should be able to go from the top in the middle all the way back and then around the back and that'll leave us the front to do our detail work on. As the middle of the top is softening up, this front part's fighting me. So I'm going to have to change over and do a little bit more over here as I do the top. Now, since we worked out that one bulge, we're able to pull the rest of this over. You can see we still got a little bump there. On most of mine, I almost always have a little bit of a bump right there. But once it's done, you won't be able to uh, be able to tell unless you're right up on it. So that's good and tight around the top to this half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over the front again, try and lock back around that top row of teeth, and maybe the bridge of the nose to help hold this while I finish off the back. Now that we're clear again, come in and use a bit of pressure. Once again, we're not going for detail yet. We're just trying to make sure that this jug stays in place. So you can see from this side now, we're starting to conform uh, across the bridge of the nose and then under down to the front row of teeth and down. And it's just enough to where we're getting a little less and less movement here. So now I'm going to continue back on the top again, working from the top area down this left side. So we got a good bit done. We're going to come in. And watch where you're holding this if you have to hold it like I do because this does get very, very hot. You can see the more we do, the more it evens out quicker it starts to go. So now we'll come back and we'll do this side a little bit more. And you do want to work from the front to the back. We want the plastic to bunch up anywhere. We want it to bunch up in the back where it's not going to be seen. Unless for some reason you're doing skulls to have the back of your skull showing. Not for me, but some people might. So I'm going to start up here. I'll probably warm this ridge up. If you can kind of see that's sticking out quite a bit. I'm going to see if I can just flatten it a little bit and then work my way down from there. here. We're going to quickly push into the temple, brush back, and try and get underneath that cheekbone real quick before this cools too much. Now you can see this is how that was about a minute ago. And now 
we've got that little bit of definition right there. And that little bit is going to make it a lot easier on us. One thing I forgot to mention, if you are using cardboard, keep a towel or something around just to wipe up the excess that just sits on it because it's alright if the cardboard gets wet. It's when the water sits on it that it starts getting bad. <laughs> I won't even lie to you. It starts getting a little rocky. So, um, wood base definitely better idea. But anyways, um, so we got that side semi-defined. So now we're going to come back and we're going to do the same to this side. So now we have both our cheekbones are defined. So now what I'll do is I'm going to go back between the eyes, work down the bridge of the nose, I'm going to do the nose, lock the front teeth in, and go back over there again, but now that it's holding in, it'll be a little bit easier. So you can see, you can go over these things for, once you get your basic shape done, I mean, you can spend at least an hour going over and finding little parts that you want to you wanna fix, and it will make it look better in the long run, but you do have to think, what level of detail do you really need it at? And is it something you can hide either with lighting or just with a simple paint technique? actually blew through a little hole here. Stayed a little too long, which is all right. I mean, it's it's a skull. There's nothing to say there can't be a hole in the side of it, right? Someone could have got shot there. Who knows? It's really that much of an eyesore. You can always, when you're done, an option to do is to fill this with great stuff or some other expanding foam to make it a little more dense so it doesn't just kind of rattle around like a tin can. Uh, and then you can just paint right over that and no one will know what's there. So, um, this is about the level that I'm happy with. I'm put this uh, in the sink and let some cold water run on it for about two minutes, and then we will pull our plastic off and um, we'll go on to the next step. We've got our, our uh, skull cooled off, so now what I'm going to do is take our trusty box cutter and right where our slit was from we initially made, we're just going to follow that because that usually should be pretty much in the center of the skull. We're going to follow that up to about the very top of the skull. Loosen up underneath your cheekbones here. You'll always stick there. Now what I'll do is I'll pull from the, right under the jaw, I'll hold here, I'm gonna lift up and pull it forward. It comes right off, super easy. So now we have this, and what I'm gonna do now is just get some hot glue, and you can see where this is split, and I'm just gonna hold it where it needs to be, and put a little hot glue along the inside of the seam there, and then we'll be ready for paint. So I got this paint, uh, this is acrylic paint, uh, matte acrylic paint, I should say. Um, Apple Barrel from Walmart, cost 50 cents a bottle, nothing special. Um, and to cover this, usually from what I saw, it takes about two coats. So the formula I came up with is to do one coat 
the base coat of just the regular white and that will give us our bone color and then we'll go over it um, uh, kind of a, a lighter coat of ivory and then we're going to dry brush on top of the ivory to highlight with the white again and that will give it kind of a, a three layered effect that looks looks decent um, you know obviously if you have it somewhere really well lit for whatever reason you might want to take a little more time maybe do some airbrushing on it um, but between that and our black that uh, that does more than more than good for what uh, what we need it for So that's our first coat. Um, you can see it's not, oops, it's not perfect. It's just a rough coat. Um, so I'm gonna go set this to uh, dry for about, I don't know, four or five minutes maybe, and then I'll come back and we'll do uh, we'll do the ivory. All right. So our white is pretty much dry. The front's dry. The back's still a little wet, um, which is good enough for me to start doing my second coat here. So this is the uh, this is the ivory. It's just a slightly, it's kind of like an off-white, a yellowish white. Um, and this will just be kind of dry brushed on for uh, just to kind of give a second secondary color to it, give it some depth. So that's our second coat. So that's our that's our ivory. So you can kind of see the different color variation there. That's also a matte. So when it dries, it won't have any gloss to it. Um, but you can see we kind of got just a little bit. It's not just solid white. I did one skull that was solid white. It looked kind of cool. It looked a little too comic booky for me. You know, obviously the contrast was there, but this, you know, in a dim light, will have just a better better look to it. So we're gonna let this dry, and then we'll uh, we'll come back and do our black. All right, guys, um, the ivory is almost dry. It's still wet in quite a few spots, but that's all right because where we're doing our black isn't going to matter anywhere uh, in those areas. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. What I do for the teeth is I'll take a wet paper towel and the paint, I'll get a good wet amount, and I'll paint the teeth solid black in an area. I'll come back real quick and wipe it off. All I want is that kind of a tinge, and it is pulling the base coat off underneath it, but that's all right. see the translucency there but since I rubbed kind of hard the low spots are still darker. A little bit of white. But that's it. Um, 
Oh, these are the other two. They were already done. So as you can see, they all look, you know, just a little bit different from each other. Um, no two are completely identical. That'll do it for today. This was our first tutorial video, so I hope you guys like it. If there's another DIY project that you know of that you'd like to see us do, or if you have a question if there is a way to do one, uh, we have no problem doing a little bit of the legwork, so uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. If you haven't already, give us a like and a follow on Facebook at Evil Olive Productions. Uh, we also have a website, EvilOliveProductions.com, and uh, all this stuff that we're doing, that we're going to be doing videos on, in the future are for our haunt uh, which is called Malice and that's going to be here in Lewisburg, Tennessee. It's all will be in scenes and um, I do want to do some videos later on of how we use them and other products that we use. Um, we'll have a video coming up real soon um, using some brutal rust on, an old meat, on a new meat grinder seeing how old we can make it look. We'll be doing some Arduino prop controllers homemade that you can build yourself, how to use them with, uh, we're gonna be using them with air valves, with LED lights, we'll be using them with, uh, what else? Uh, some music, some soundscapes from uh, Audio Zombie. So stay tuned, follow the Facebook page and our website, and um, until next time, I guess that's about it. Anything else, York? Nothing? All right, thanks for thinking inside the jar.